speaker is Tracy Duberman. Tracy is founder and CEO of the Leadership Development Group, and she's the author, co-author of From Competition to Collaboration. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Jeanette, so much for having me here. And I'm so excited to join this esteemed panel of authors and to be here with you today. Good? OK, there we go. So um, what I'd like to talk to you about today is perception being reality, something we hear time and time again. The best way for me to describe that to you is to talk about an ancient Hindu parable called the three blind men and the elephant. Are any of you aware of that parable? OK, John. For those of you that aren't, uh, there's a village. And in that village comes an elephant. And the three blind men in the village decide they don't know what an elephant is. So they walk over to the elephant. And the first man touches the trunk of the elephant and says, oh, I know what an elephant is. It's very similar to the trunk of a tree. The second blind man touches the tusk of the elephant and says, oh, no, you're wrong. The elephant is actually like a piece of porcelain. And the third blind man touches the tail of the elephant. And he says, you're both wrong. The elephant is like a rope. And they start to argue back and forth. And a wise man approaches them and says, what are you arguing about? They said, well, we can't decide what this elephant is. And the wise man said to them, well, the reason why is because you're all right. You all are looking at the elephant with a different perspective, or feeling the elephant with a different perspective. And that's really the point of our book, From Competition to Collaboration. Because what we need to do today in the healthcare industry is start to think outside of the box of our individual organizations and our individual sectors if we're really going to move the needle on what John mentioned before, which is population health. So I'd like you to think today as I'm going through my presentation of the three blind men being the payer sector, the provider sector, and the pharmaceutical sector, and the elephant being the healthcare industry. Okay? So as we know today, uh, the industry itself is facing unprecedented challenges. Thankfully, we're starting to shift our focus from the provision of providing care to taking care of populations, which means that we have to focus more on just the delivery and also include things like the social determinants of health. And that is requiring us as leaders to think and act very differently. This challenge brought us to doing some research. And we surveyed about 250 health industry leaders across the various sectors of the industry. And we asked them what their number one challenge was within their organizations. And surprisingly, what they said is it wasn't what was going on in their organizations that was the biggest challenge. In fact, the biggest challenge was what was going on outside, meaning how do they develop partnerships with other organizations outside of their provider group in order to manage population health. We then furthered our research and conducted about three dozen interviews with leaders from across the different sectors to find out what they're doing to act and think differently because these folks were able uh, to have cross-sector partnerships. And what we found is a new model of leadership, which is what we discuss in the book. And it's called the Health Ecosystem Leadership Model, otherwise known as HELM. The best way for me to describe it to you is to take you through one of our contributors. Um, I am uh, giving her a new name uh, so that I'm not releasing where she's from, but I do want you to understand what this is all about by demonstrating what she did. So the first key competency that we saw in our research around health ecosystem leadership is the ability of these leaders to envision the future. So these are leaders that are capable of thinking about the what ifs and once they identify the what ifs, they then can identify the stakeholders that they need to bring into their group and convene to start to co-develop the new vision for their health ecosystem. And in Emily's case, what she quickly realized is that focusing only on providing care was just a small cog in the wheel of population health. We know now that we have to focus on things outside of providing care, such as housing and employment and food st stability and safety. And so she brought folks from around all of the other industries together to start to think about how they could work together to impact population health in their communities. 
The second key competency that health ecosystem leaders demonstrate is one of aligning diverse stakeholders. So these are leaders that are capable of seeking connections with others, building relationships, respecting diversity. For Emily, what she decided to do was join the boards of some of her local community agencies so that she could learn what they value, what are the things that are important to them in terms of controlling cost and increasing value. She also invited those stakeholders that I mentioned to join her boards as, as part of her community hospitals so that they could learn more about the issues that are facing the hospital systems that she was managing. And by doing so, she was able to really understand what their priorities are, what they value, and therefore they could develop strategies together. The third competency for health ecosystem leaders is the ability to manage boundaries and obstacles. These are leaders that don't focus on the limitations, but instead look at it in terms of opportunities. For somebody like Emily, what she was able to do in one situation when she came to an impasse in negotiations with one of the insurance companies, they were trying to develop a narrow network pricing schedule so that they could hit the vulnerable populations. At first they said no, uh, but instead of thwarting all of the negotiations, she invited some of the insurance brokers into her hospital to sit down and really identify how they could come up with a higher volume plan for lower cost. And at the end of the day, they were able to do so, creating a win-win situation for the health system, the insurance company, and the consumers that they provided services to. Lastly, health ecosystem leaders are leaders that are continuously acting and learning. So these are the leaders that know that they may not hit a home run at every at bat, but they realize that there's value in hitting singles along the way. So for Emily, she came up with an idea to manage unemployment in vulnerable populations in her community. And she did so by offering guaranteed employment to individuals that went through a training program that the health system offered. Now she invited the local businesses and some of her other key stakeholders to do the same. Many of the local businesses that were supported by shareholders had to unfortunately withdraw from that because they had shareholders that they, had to, that they were accountable to and they didn't want to make any type of uh, uh, overture to have people employed in their systems if they didn't meet certain criteria. So instead of guaranteeing the employment, what they did is they funded training and development for those on the vulnerable population. So these are ways to work around some issues that she, that she faced. So Emily's work is, isn't done. Uh, it is never done. In fact, what I believe is that the work of health ecosystem leaders is something that is continuous. Much as we would like to have a magic bullet to fix our healthcare system, we know that that's an impossibility right now. What we need to do instead is think differently as leaders. We need to be able to envision a new future, align diverse stakeholders, manage boundaries and obstacles, and continuously act and learn. And that's what we cover in the book today. So thank you very much.